Immanuel Kant wrote the groundwork of metaphysics of morals in 1785. This is his categorical imperative. What else then can freedom of the will be but autonomy? That is, the property of the will to be a law to itself. But the proposition, quote, the will is in every action a law to itself, end quote, only expresses the principle, quote, act only according to that maxim whereby you can, at the same time, will that it should become a universal law, end quote. Now this is precisely the formula of the categorical imperative and is the principle of morality so that a free will and a will subject to moral laws are one and the same. Soren Kierkegaard wrote in his journals about Kant's imperative. Kant thought that man was his own legislator, autonomy that is, subjecting himself to the law that he gives to himself. Properly understood, this is to postulate lawlessness or experimentation. There will be as little seriousness in this as in the mighty blows Sancho Panza dealt himself on the back. It is impossible for me, in A, really to be stricter than I am in B, or wish to be that. There must be a constraint if there is to be earnest. When nothing higher than myself is binding, if it is simply that I am to bind myself, then whereas A, the one who binds, am I to acquire the strictness I do not possess as B, the one to be bound, if A and B are the self-same. This is evident these days, especially in our religious realms. The conversion which is properly from immediacy to spirit, that dying away, will not be serious, will be an illusion, experimentation, if there is no factor which is not the individual itself. That is why all eminent individualities are also compelled. They are instruments. Not only is there no law that I give myself as a maxim, it is the case that there is a law given me by a higher authority. And not just that, the legislator makes so free as to take part in the capacity of education and exerts the compulsion. If someone never acts so decisively that this educator can get hold of him, yes, then he gets to live on in comfortable illusion, fantasy, and experimentation. But this also implies he is in the very highest disfavor. A person can at least be strict enough with himself to grasp that this business of my own strictness amounts to nothing. I must have another to help, one who can be severe even if he can also be lenient. But to have dealings with this other does not mean giving assurance upon assurance. It means acting. As soon as one acts decisively and emerges into actuality, existence can get hold of one, and guidance bring one up. From the Papers and Journals of Soren Kierkegaard, 50, Roman numeral 10, 2, A, 396. Hane, translation, 1996, page 467.